All right, so real briefly, I'm gonna cover some of the things that might not be so obvious in the video. So when you're putting together your quad, depending on the frame that you have, I mean, some things are gonna be different, but at the end of the day, everything pretty much boils down to these major components. And I'm gonna show you how these major components are supposed to all be kind of connected to each other. So um, first of all, what powers the entire quadcopter is your LiPo battery. And you'll connect your LiPo battery. This is the positive lead and a negative lead. And depending on, you know, you might actually, I've, I've got on this new quadcopter, I've got a, I suppose, an upgraded version of a flight controller and an upgraded version of a power distribution board. It just makes it easier to use. But at the end of the day, they're both identical because the only things you're really caring about here in connections are these four pins where you've got three pins each. That's where your receiver for your transmitter plugs in. And you'll see they're marked aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. And then over here, you've got your motor plugs. This is for motor one, two, three, and four. So you can see that this goes all the way up to six. You just will leave these two empty. So to power the entire quad, you've got your battery, which plugs directly into the distribution board. And some distribution boards will come with a battery plug already kind of soldered to two wires. <clears throat> some will not. So if, if you don't have that, you'll need some 12 gauge wire, okay? And you'll cut the wire to be, I don't know, maybe six, six inches or so. You might trim it or make, make it longer, it doesn't really matter. But you'll just kind of, one thing you have to do, you know, every frame is a little different and the, the way you're going to situate that frame is a little different. For example, if you're not putting on a Raspberry Pi and a Grove Pi, you've got a lot more space to put things where you want than I did on my quad in this video. Regardless, you got, let's say two, you got a black and red 12 gauge wire, and then you can buy these little XT60 uh, plugs. You would solder that in, put some shrink wrap on it, uh, heat that up, and now you've got your plug that connects in, okay? So the battery comes into here. From there, what happens is power comes out from the distribution board and heads to your ESCs, okay? So this is my ESC. Basically, the ESC plugs in uh, to the various like here and here I say plug but actually what what I mean is you have to solder it on okay so if you have the power distribution board that I had they had little bullet connectors here so you would actually take this male connector and solder it to each one and then you just have to plug them in and so that's why I bought it it was it was just a lot easier to do because you'll notice the holes here are pretty large and to solder these little tiny wires in those large holes is actually kind of difficult. So I, that's why I like that other board, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and especially like with soldering here, to solder a 12 gauge wire in there, it's super easy. It just requires a lot of solder. We'll talk about uh, how to solder here in a moment, but first I just wanna show you how everything connects. So let me move this over to get as much space as I can. <clears throat> so power comes out through your distribution board to the ESC and then the ESC here, this is your like your motor cable. Brown is basically ground. So then your motor cable, let's say this is for motor number one, will plug in to your control board. So for example, this is my control board here. So I plugged into motor number one. Might be kind of hard to see, but that's those three pins where you got six rows of three pins. It's plugged in to motor number one now. So when that's plugged in, let me move this over. Now you have the ESC and that's, this is also how the board gets its power. The power is literally coming from the motor board. And so the now the KK board, when you plug in, will have power. Then you have these three black wires coming out of your ESC. This confused the heck out of me because you've got three black wires coming out of your ESC and you've got three black wires on your motor. This is just really irritating because you're probably wondering, uh, how do I connect these freaking things? Well... From what I can find, you actually just kind of connect them randomly. <laughs> and um, I guess the ESC or the motor just figures it out. I don't know what kind of wizardry they're doing in there. But bottom line, you're not going to break anything by uh, you just randomly connect these. So what you're going to do, and the, what's important is you randomly connect them, but you might find that the motor is spinning in the, in the incorrect direction. So in order to fix that, if it's not spinning in the direction you want, you just flip any two of the wires and that will reverse the motor. So again, that's like super crazy sounding to me, but that just, that's the way it is. Like that is the recommendation and everything. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so that was really hard whenever I was first getting started. So next is these bullet adapters. How do we use them? How do we solder them and all that? Um, basically, 
uh, you take, if you look at the adapter, it might be kind of hard to see on the video, but yeah. So what you, you see that little hole there? This is just how I do it. I don't know if this is the proper way, but anyway, I'll take the soldering iron tip and I push, put the tip in that, through that hole basically, just the tip. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then you've got, I'm so mature. You've got uh, the wire, so you would like drop in that wire through the through the actual like larger hole there. Drop in that wire, and then you've got you put the tip in there, and you warm up. Basically, you're heating everything, and then I take the solder, and I feed in the solder in, at the same place where I'm feeding in the wire. So this, you know, it might not be totally ideal because here's the, the thing with um, with soldering is generally what you want to do is rather than um, you don't you don't he, you know you don't touch the solder with the iron instead what you're trying to do is you're trying to touch the metal that you're the, the metal parts that you're trying to connect and you want to heat up those metal parts so that when you touch the solder to those metal parts not the iron that melts the solder and that's how you're gonna get a really nice connection with these bullet adapters um, Basically, my way around that, because it's just so hard, everything's so stuffed in there, it's almost impossible not to be touching the wire and the solder at basically with the iron. Um, I usually just poke the soldering iron in there, and I leave it there for maybe 10 seconds, and then I feed in the solder. And that's that's been fine. I haven't had any bad connections yet, so um, just keep that in mind. So, um, so you'll solder basically this one on here, and then coming over to your motor, you would solder the male end of the bullet adapter to this side. And then when you're all done, you've got both of these, you would just simply connect them. Okay. And for now, I would just leave them bare. And I, I used um, painter's tape just to make sure they don't touch each other. I'm not 100% certain that it would be a problem if they touched each other simply because of the circuitry in there. But I didn't want to find out because ESCs and, and the motors are kind of expensive. Someone can tell me for sure if they know if, if, if it wouldn't really matter if these two touched each other. But I do know if it touched your frame, you might be in trouble. So um, so anyway, I just kind of wrapped them in a little bit of painter tape just to make sure they weren't going to touch anything. And then once I was certain that the uh, order was correct, I used electrical tape, taped each one individually, and then I taped them around the arm. But you'll see that in the video. Um, and then finally, the real way that typically you're going to solder is going to be the following. So this is a pretty ugly board. So let me flip it over. <laughs> this is the board I fried. Uh, so uh, basically to solder typically onto a circuit board, you've got wires like this and the leads will stick up out through the holes. And then you take solder, you put the solder on one side, you take your iron and you put it on the other side of the wire basically. And you'll heat up the wire first and then you'll take the solder, you'll touch it to the wire and then you just lift up. That's how you do soldering. Um, you can gob it on there, do crazy stuff, and you'll probably be more than fine, but that's generally the way that you do it. You heat up with the iron first, take the solder, touch it, not to the soldering iron, but to the actual wire itself. As soon as it starts kind of melting on there, you just whoop, lift it up, and you'll have a pretty, pretty darn good connection. You just want to make sure everything's nice and hot, and uh, the adhesion should be pretty darn good if you do it that way. Um, I do recommend there are a lot of really good videos out there on YouTube for soldering and stuff like that. Although most of them are on circuit boards where the holes are really small. These holes are really large and it's hard to do it without just gobbing the crap out of it. So um, do what you will. So anyways, um, that's how everything connects and um, that should clear up a few things. Other than this, what you don't see in this little connection is the receiver that plugs into here and that receiver is just what sends signals everywhere. Uh, while I have this this board out, I will just say, uh, if you look on the these little screws right here, these are for setting the gyro sensitivity on this board. To set gyro sensitivity on the other board, it's like a nice LCD screen. But on this one, you turn these little things with a tiny uh, flathead screwdriver, and it means nothing to you at the moment. But soon, when we're talking about calibrating the ESCs, the way that you do that is you set this yaw to zero, which is you know all the way counterclockwise. So keep that in mind if you have this board. Uh, that's what you'll do. Otherwise, uh, we'll carry on with putting together the quadcopter. All right, so this is just a super sped up version of me putting the quad together. Depending on your frame and where you're situating things, you might be putting yours together totally different. So for me, a lot of time was spent figuring out where to stuff everything because I'm trying to put a Grove Pie and a, and a Raspberry Pi on here. Uh, some things to pay attention to is motor orientation. 
Some quads are identical front to back, other frames have like a specific front and back. The one I'm working with has a specific front and back, but my previous one didn't. So once you've established that, usually the way that it goes is the black, that you'll have two, you'll have four total motors. Two of them have black tips and then two of them will have silver tips and then the black ones generally have reversed uh, threads and all that. So um, the the black motors are the ones that spin clockwise and this is considered the actual reverse rotation. So black motors are for one and three. Motor one is at the top left, three is at the bottom right. Two and four spin counterclockwise and they're located at the top right and bottom left. So keep that in mind. Also remind you again, carbon fiber conducts electricity. It will cause a short circuit if you let your components directly sit on it or touch it or contact it. Uh, it's The resistance is relatively minimal, so the conductivity is pretty small, but uh, it will cause a short circuit over, you know, after a few minutes or so, and that might be, you, your quad might be in flight. You might not notice it smoking until it's vastly too late. So even just like a little bit of electrical tape to cover the electrical components will solve this problem. Uh, finally, the last thing, before you plug in your battery the first time, check all of your leads. Make sure positive to positive, negative to negative, especially at the battery or closer to the battery. If you make this mistake and switch them around, you will likely fry everything and you'll have to start all over. So that kind of sucks. Just keep in mind though, the connection from the ESC to the motor, that's totally random. Don't worry about that one. It might be really uncomfortable for you, but uh, that's just the way it is. So that one, you don't really have to pay attention to, but be careful with the positive and negative leads going to the power distribution board and of course to the battery. So anyways, uh, with that in mind, uh, hopefully you guys will get your quad together and we'll talk about calibrating the uh, ESCs as, as well as the actual flight controller. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time.